This is my Twitter bot. This Twitter bot has been running for the last three years and since then I haven't touched it or even paid for its execution. These Twitter bots get a cat picture from a service called the Cat API and then publish a tweet into this account. It does it every six hours. I did this a long time as an experiment and then I forgot to turn it off. And now I kind of like it, the notifications are cute, I get in my Twitter uh, cat pictures. This is a serverless application. Every six hours, my function receives a trigger to execute. When it runs, it gets a cat picture from the API and publishes it at a tweet. Then stops running and again in six hours again. In this video, we will look more at serverless. Serverless is a buzzword right now, and so many people and companies are talking about it. But what it really means? The main purpose of serverless is to allow you to focus on building your application, to focus on what really benefits you, to go faster to market. This might be a different main purpose from other technologies that you have been using out there, but that's what is make it so powerful. In the past, to have a simple web application, we need to install and maintain at least one to three servers. One for the web server, maybe another one from the backend, and another one database hosted in different servers. And then no matter how small our application was, we need to maintain the server, monitor them, make sure that it's always patched and secure. That's a lot of energy wasted on doing things that really don't add any value to your offering. In order for a service or component to be serverless, it needs to fulfill four promises. The first promise is to scale automatically. This means that you, as a developer of the applications, don't need to worry if there is a lot of traffic in your application in the future or there is no traffic at all. The resources that your application needs when it's serverless, it will adjust to the traffic that the application has. The second promise is that you don't need to manage any infrastructure. When we move to the cloud, we already stop managing physical infrastructure as we don't have access to the physical servers anymore. But we still need to install operating systems, manage firewalls, networks, and plan how many resources we are going to give to our virtual servers in order for them to do their job right. The fourth promise is that they are high available by default. When you are building on-premise or in the cloud, but in a virtual machine, you need to make sure that your servers are redundant, that they are placed in different data centers, and so if something goes wrong, the application can take the blast. With serverless component, that comes out of the box. All serverless components should be deployed automatically in multiple data centers, or as we call them in AWS, availability zones, to provide high availability. And the final promise is that you pay for exactly how much you use. Billing in the serverless services is very precise and you get billed exactly for what you use, not the idle time of computing. As you see with these promises, there is a clear thing that emerged that serverless components must be placed on top of a cloud provider in order to fulfill these promises. When we talk about serverless components, they usually come in two flavors, functions as a service and backend as a service. The most traditional definition of serverless always goes on saying that serverless functions as serverless and they never mention the other half. In my experience working with serverless projects for many years, both parts are very important. Working with these components is like building Lego towers. You put different pieces together to make your application and try to get it out as fast as possible. Function as a service is the compute part of serverless. In AWS world, this is Lambda. Lambda platform will provision the code that you develop and deploy it. It will make sure that it scales up and down when you need it and with high availability. And the function will get executed only when something triggers it. A Lambda function can be triggered by many different things. Changes in the state, like a new record in a database, a new file in storage, a new message in a queue, an HTTP request, or somebody press a button in a web application. When a function is triggered, it executes, and when it executes, it can do many things, like calling other AWS services, calling third parties API, doing some business logic. Basically, whatever you imagine that it can do. When it finished, it goes back to idle. This is very different from how traditional application executes. Traditional applications are running all the time, listening for some new request or message in a port. 
If nobody calls them, they are still running and waiting. Backend as a service in their hand refers to all those managed services that adhere to the serverless promise stated earlier. Managed services that tend to do one thing, like providing authentication for applications, offering storage capabilities, or a NoSQL database service. There's so many managed services nowadays that this list of services is quite long. So what are the pros and cons of choosing serverless for your next project? Well, let's start with the pros. There are plenty. The first one is that you don't need to manage any infrastructure to scale your application and scaling is automatically and it goes up and down according to your needs. This makes your application requiring low maintenance, you pay for how much you use, so no more paying for idle time. And the main benefit of all is that you can really focus on what produces value in your application. You don't need to focus in all those other tasks that are just needed to keep the lights on. The cons, these are more complicated and I'm pretty sure a lot of the cons can be eliminated when the developer have experience working with serverless. One of the most popular that you hear around is the call stars. For me, this is not really a cons as there's many ways to mitigate it and you can develop your application around this issue. But this one is mentioned a lot. If you don't know what call stars is, are basically starting your function the first time. And this function is started on a request base, so that first invocation might take a little longer. If you want me to do a video around strategies to minimize call stars, let me know in the comments. Another one that is quite popular is that Lambda functions are stateless. That is something that you need to learn to handle. You need to always assume that there is nothing on memory. There are some tools like step functions that will help you to build stateful serverless application. I have a video about them and the link is in the description box of this video. Another cons is the reduced overall control. A lot of operation people and old school developers, they complain that they cannot get inside the Lambda function as they were getting inside the virtual machine and see what is going on. And there is no control over managed services. That is true. You lose some control, but you also reduce the cost of ownership of your application. And finally, the last cons that you hear a lot is the increased architectural complexity of your application. This is very true. If you're new to serverless and you don't understand the new mindset on creating serverless applications, you might make a mess and that will lead to a lot of architectural complexity. So it's very important to get familiar with some important design principles when working with serverless. If you want a video of that, let me know in the comment box below. So that's it for this video. If you want to start building serverless applications, my YouTube channel has over 250 videos on that topic and I'm planning to release more beginner friendly like these videos in the future so you can get started with serverless. If you like this video, please share it and give it a like so YouTube promote it and if you're not subscribed, please go and do it. I post two times a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays and usually do one live stream a week answering all your questions. So thank you very much and I see you in the next episode of Hoover. Ciao, ciao!